Alright, so, uh, hello everybody. It's been a while since we've seen each other. Um, it literally was just uh, about less than a day. So, uh, I woke up today in the morning and I realized that I forgot to mention the last part about C Sharp. And it's a really important one because, um, it's all. <clears throat> It's all about uh, basically abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, and properties. Because I'm going to cover all of these parts. Because there's a bunch of other things, but these are the ones that you'll use the most. Uh, it's about object-oriented programming, essentially. And what we're doing is we have uh, classes, and each class has their own properties. And they can even inherit stuff between each other. And... Um, they can also have a uh, have a what's it called a property that is common to each and every uh, one of those classes, for example. So the example I have prepared for all of you today, and this took a little while to make it as simple to understand, so that everyone can pretty much go ahead and try it. Uh, the code will be as always available on my GitHub. So essentially, uh, let's not talk about this. Actually, shall we talk about that first? Let me explain actually what we're doing here. So in this set of code, you'll see this thing over here uh, It says public abstract class character. So if you don't know what a class is Basically a class can be defined as a object that uh, has certain values or properties uh, For example, we can have a abstract class So an abstract class is kind of like a class above regular classes essentially so we can define a abstract property, or actually a, a abstract function that will do something and it will be different for each and every, um, for every class, for example. So I figured, what's the closest thing to a class that is related to games? Because, you know, it's easier to explain. So the one thing I uh, came up with was uh, a little... Uh, I would like to call some sort of a character picking RPG game, which is like um, kind of like you have like two classes, and you can pick uh, one class, and it will write out the values for you and all the stuff. So let me first explain what's going on here. So the thing right here, the extra class, as I mentioned, it's a class that's above every other class, which makes it kind of like the leader class essentially. And uh, the, thing, the thing I have here, the abstract one, it basically says, hey, this value will be different for, like, this void will be different for each and every class. Um, so that's that. Then we have uh, this thing right here, the public class mage and this character thing here. So what this means is we have a class called mage which in, is inheriting from our character class. What does our character class have? Our character class has this void right here, which is called stats. So if you see here, we have the public override void. Now, why is there the override? Essentially, the abstract class is like, hey, I'm above you, but you can take control of me, which is the override thing right here. So essentially what we're doing is we're giving these values these, we're giving these, uh, let's say, properties, these values. So our mage here has 110 HP, 210 mana, and 100 stamina. And uh, what you see here is we have constructor, constructors and variables. So let's go one line by line, essentially. So this thing, the private double HP, SDM, and MNA, is essentially um, variables which are called HP, STM, and MNA and these are private so they are specific only for that class. Um, then we have this thing right here the public, mage, those brackets and the squiggly brackets. This is a empty constructor it has to be there because if you do not include it it won't compile and it will scream at you. So this is a empty constructor. The thing below it however is a is a filled constructor. What this means is that this constructor has some properties to it. Properties we can call. 
So here we have that health, which is a property defined here, has the same value as our variable HP. Our variable HP has its values defined here. Um, next is stamina. So we have a uh, so we have a property called stamina, which gets its value from our variable STM and sets its value like that. The same goes for mana. So we have a property called mana and it gets its value from the MNA variable which is 210. So essentially our mana will have the value of 210 for our mage. Because you know, mages use mana for fireballs and such. However, this is just the first class. What we can do, we can inherit from this class and make a attack for our character. So what I have here is I have a um, public class called mage attack which inherits from our mage, so it's specific to our mage character and nobody else. And we have a public void, which is a function called fireball, and what it will do, it will write out that the mage has used fireball. Essentially telling it, hey, I used fireball with our mage character. So that's our first class, hopefully explained properly, I hope this makes sense. Next we go to our other character here, so th the next class I decided to create was Avoria, so we can have a bit of a choice. So you guys can see that it actually works, that I'm, making, that I'm not making stuff up. So we have a public class called Warrior, which inherits from our Extract class character. If you remember, our character class has been an Abstract class, which has an Abstract um, function, excuse me, called Stats. So you see over here, let's go one line by line to explain everything once again. So we have a private set of variables, HP, STM, and RG. RG is different because warriors don't generally use mana, they use something called rage. That's why I define a RG variable. Here we have our empty constructor, again it just has to be there, otherwise it won't work. Um, then we have... Uh, uh, then we have a field constructor and essentially what this is is this is a method which sets the values so one main advantage of using this method is you can set the values uh, for each character for each I would like to say uh, prop for each like the property of the character because um, our warrior has different HP, so the HP variable will have the value of 210 and we define the property as health and it will get the value from the variable HP and sets it, its value according to that. Same thing goes for stamina, we have a uh, property called stamina and it will get its value from the STM variable which is right here and has 300. So the stamina of our warrior is around 300 points. And next we have Rage. Rage is a property that will get its value from the variable RG, which has a value of 100. So our warrior's Rage has the value of 100, essentially. And these are the properties defined. So it will basically get its value from the HP variable and set its value according to that. Next we have this thing right here, the public class warrior attack. Essentially it's a class that inherits from the warrior, so it's specific for our warrior class. And uh, what it does, it has a function in it, which is called sword slash, and uh, it writes out that the warrior has used sword slash. Um, so these are like the classes explained along with a bit of inheritance and polymorphism and properties. So the only thing left to explain essentially is uh, the code itself, what you do to use those values that you've defined. So the thing you do um, is, uh, first I have a integer code end, because we will be uh, constantly calling in a loop until the user exits it essentially. So we have a loop here set up, I'll get into that in a moment. So that's used for the loop later on. 
Next we had next we call the mage class and give it a name called mage in lower caps. And the new mage basically tells it like, hey, I want you to get everything that the mage has and give me access to it. So everything that the mage class has gives me all the data that I need in order to use all the functions that are in the so basically use its attacks, set its health and stuff. Uh, the same goes for the warrior. And then I have the mage attack and warrior attack separately. That's because those are separate classes, so I have to call them separately. Even though they inherit from the previous class, I call them separately because it's it, it essentially works and makes the code a bit more understandable. Um, so these are the classes that we call again, just to reiterate, mage is called mage in lower caps, warrior is called warrior in lower caps, the mage attack is mage underscore attack, and warrior attack is essentially warrior underscore attack, pretty much self-explanatory. Next we go into the loop, so what the, uh, let me actually space this out a little. So here we have our loop, this is essentially the game itself. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm in a while loop, so it will do all of these things until the variable end is equal to 1. Once the variable end is equal to 1, which will be set if you pick the third option, which if you look in our menu is exit, it will exit the game because it sets its variable to 1 and then it will exit. And it will write out the end afterwards. I can actually show you this, so let me just compile this real quick. I have it prepared over here, so all I have to do is just click, press the enter key, and it's compiled. So all I have to do now is, I'm sorry, is I have to just write out the name of the application. Uh, you guys cannot see it because of my fat face. And let me just move into the middle so it's a bit easier to see. So what I'm doing here is I'm calling the application. Once I launch it, of course the vest is going to complain, but... Um, Essentially what we're doing here is, let me just close it and call the app again. Let me just clear this out. So you saw me compile it before, so now I have to just call the app. So what you see here, it generated for us a menu. The menu is defined over here. Essentially, move one line down and write out pick a class. Move one line down again, write out one dash mage. Move one line down again, write out warrior, and so on until it writes out the last thing. So why is the cursor over here? The cursor is over there because we used the right function. If I use the right line, it will move the cursor down here, which doesn't look good if you're making a simple menu like this. So it gives us a pick a class option and it has the exit, which is kind of like a menu, essentially. Um, we could refine this a bit, a bit by making a like, pick a class or exit. Oops, or exit to make this a bit more understandable, which however means I have to remove the the thing that I've created, which is really easy to do. I usually use del and ram to remove those. Del is short for uh, delete and ram is short for remove. You've seen me use those a couple times already. And I'll just have to compile it again. As you can see, it worked out just fine. And if I decide to run the app, it will most likely scream at me from a vast, which it does. So I'll just close this, do ACLS again to clear it out. And run the app again, and it won't scream at me. So, um, essentially what we're doing here is, we have our, so we now have changed it. As you can see, it now no longer says pick a class. It says pick a class or exit, so this makes a bit more sense now. Because exit is not a class, it's a function to exit the app. If I pick 3 and hit enter, it writes out end and waits for input. Once I hit enter, it exits, it exits the app, which is what I wanted. Because if I pick option 3, it exits the loop because it set the end variable to 1. And if it's equal to 1, it will exit the loop and write out end and wait for our key to be pressed. So, if I launch the app again and pick, for example, the mage, what it will do, it will say class, which I've picked, which was mage, 
Then it will write out the health, which is not what I wanted. So you see, not everything is perfect. <laughs> um, this is supposed to say stats here as well. This makes far more sense now. So again, we'll have to remove those to make sure that it uh, doesn't interfere with anything. And let me just compile this again. Oh, it will work either way, I just had to change one thing. And now we run the app again. Of course, a fast will scream again, so we'll close that. Exit the app, do ACLS again, and run the app again. So now that we fixed it and we picked the mage class again, you'll see it writes out that the class we've picked is our mage and that the stats of our character are that the health points are 110. So if we go up and have a look at our mage class, you will notice, I had it conveniently right next to it, that our health is 110, which checks out, mana is 210, which checks out, and stamina is 100, which checks out. But why does it write out that the mage has used fireball? Haha! <laughs> well, the thing is, right after it writes out the stats, I have it uh, call its attack, which is the uh, fireball move, which if you remember, we've defined, uh, where is it, uh, right over here, and it has to write out the line that the mage has used fireball, which is defined only in the space, so the class obviously works, which is what we wanted. Um, next, it repeats itself, so why does it keep repeating itself? Well, that's because we didn't exit the loop, we're still in the same loop. So what it gives us is the opportunity to check out our warrior class. So if I press 2, it should write out the warrior's stats. And you will see that the stats are different and that it, the class is different, everything is different. So what it did, it write out that our class that we've picked is the warrior, which if you have a look over here is okay. Then it write out the stats. So if we scroll back up again to the stats section, you will notice that the stats do check out. Health is 210, which makes sense, it's different from the Mage's one, which was at 110. Um, then we have Rage, Rage is at 100, which is the RG volume right here. And then we have Stamina, which is at 300, which obviously checks out. And then it says Warrior use Sword Slash, so again, if we scroll down, you'll see we are calling the function Sword Slash from our class Warrior Attack which is right here, class warrior attack, function, sort slash, writes out warrior, used sort slash, which makes sense, because our warrior has used sort slash. And again, we can press 3 to exit the app, it will write out end, wait for the key to press, that's it. I hope this made sense, the code will be available on GitHub. If I remember something that I need to teach, this was also a bit of an introduction, into object-oriented programming. If this was a bit too much to understand, uh, just let me know. I'll try to hopefully make a better example next time. But um, again, it took me a little while to come up with a pretty solid example to explain all of these four topics like at once with good examples. You can toy around with the code if you want and send me your ideas on what on how to extend it, what else to add. But that's pretty much it, there's nothing else to it. And object-oriented programming is like really powerful, it's used in a ton of cases. I'm not gonna go into detail in what cases they are used. This was, I think, the last one. Again, in the last video I said that that topic, which I've mentioned, uh, which, if you guys remember, the topic that I've mentioned uh, was, what was it, uh, which one was with my full calculator video, um, I told you that it was the last video, um, this one might be it, but I'm not really sure, again, there might be people who need to explain stuff, I'm trying to make this as approachable as possible, I totally forgot to explain classes and all those other things, but this is essentially the last topic. There's nothing else that you need to know. You can then start experiment experimenting with these values and with these sets of code that I've created for you guys to see what you can create, which is essentially something uh, really cool. Now, 
Again, if you like the video, make sure to leave a like, share this around with your friends or people who are just starting to learn how to code and want to create applications like this or are planning on or you plan on creating a project where you have to use object oriented programming this might be the project to go with it's easy to create easy to tweak you can make this in literally less than an hour or even less or even a longer time depending on how experienced you are but just remember that uh, you have to have fun while you're coding. If it's not fun and it's tedious for you, it's probably not for you and you shouldn't force yourself. So yeah, uh, that's, that's all I have to say. Make sure to share the video around. Um, let people know that might be interested in this. And uh, I hope to see you guys in another video. Make sure to stay safe and wash your hands.